Hello to the pessimistic, optimistic, and everyone in between. Welcome back to the Minnesotan Podcast. My name is Connor Phillippe, and we are getting back into these weekly predictions for the games um, as I kind of took a hiatus from them for a while. For a while, I was literally just doing the week-by-week, you know, raw reactions to the games, and I apologize for that. Um, I have a side job along with my normal job working uh, for a live stream service that covers a lot of high school games, and there's a lot of section activity going on with all the different tournaments, and so I was busy working a lot of those and didn't have a lot of time to work on this. Um, so with that now being done and, and calming down a little bit, I can focus more on working on these videos and making content, and I'm hoping to continue to do the full you know, Vikings prediction, weekly prediction, and breakdown of everything on Tuesday, and I should have four at least four videos a week now back up instead of the the one video a week that I've been doing. So again, one more time, I apologize for that, but we're going to get into these week seven predictions. Um, So there's going to be kind of a smaller sample size, unfortunately, at the end of the season for how many of these I get right or wrong, because as you know, if you watch the first few of these, uh, I do write every single one of these predictions down, and then I correct them and I see what my record is. Um, So I'll give you the updated record after this week and after I grade it on Tuesday, so you'll get to see that. But a lot of games, and and I'm also going to be debuting this week my upset of the week prediction. Um, So I didn't do it the first few weeks because, you know, you don't know a whole lot about teams yet. Um, But I'm going to start it this week. It's one game a week where I pick an upset pick, um, and I'm going to give myself two wins if I get that right. Um, So, eh, you know what, I'm not going to do that. It's just going to be for fun. I'm going to predict one that I think might be an upset, and I'll see if I get it right. Um, And I'm just going to be risking kind of a worse for the wear record with that. But it is what it is. I'm not going to give myself brownie points for it. But anyway, let's get into this slate of matchups. I'm going to start by just breaking down the Saints-Cardinals real quick. Because I make these videos on Friday, breaking down the week, I can't get to the Thursday night games in time. So I'll do my breakdown of that real quick before we get started. Uh, so the Cardinals win 42-34 to against the Saints. Um, if you haven't seen that that really funny clip of, of uh, I can't remember who it was, but the one, on one of the pick sixes um, for the Cardinals, you see a guy just leap into the end zone, run into frame, leaping in as there's a close-up shot of Andy Dalton walking off the field, and that really shows the emotion of most Saints fans watching this game. almost just not, don't want to look anymore. Uh, so the Cardinals... 42 points and 14 of those scored on pick sixes. So it's kind of a weird situation where Andy Dalton threw 30 for 47, 361 yards and four TDs, but it still looked like a horrible performance because of his pick sixes he threw. And, you know, it's just costly mistakes to give up. It doesn't matter how well you throw the rest of the game. If you're giving the other team 14 points just from your own arm of, of, of throwing a pick six, you're, you're not benefiting your team at all. Uh, the Cardinals have a really good day rushing the ball, um, and it's hard to get a gauge on what this means for the Cardinals. DeAndre Hopkins had a good game, and it looks like he uh, is going to come back and, and play well again um, after his suspension, um, so it definitely will help the team, and it makes me a little nervous with the Vikings playing them now next week, now that they have a lot more of a full team, um, not to mention the fact that they, they gained a couple more guys also. Um, through the trade deadline, which I'll make a video, um, I'm thinking, on Monday or Tuesday, breaking down all the different moves um, of this week and a half or so. Um, The big one, obviously, being Christian McCaffrey, which we'll talk about. Um, But the Cardinals team is definitely a better team than they were a few days ago um, with these additions, and I think they're going to be a better team throughout the season, but we're going to have to see exactly how good they will be because At the rate they were playing before these additions, they weren't making the playoffs by any means. Now, are they a playoff team, a fringe playoff team? I mean, the NFC is a very... uh, (laughs) The NFC is not looking great so far this year, just put it bluntly. Um, So they might be able to sneak into the playoffs the way they've been playing, but I'll do a breakdown of that as we go along. But 42-34 win, and the Saints, as a Vikings fan, I love to see that. The Saints lose again 2-5. and Um to start off the season, which is awesome to see. Let's get into the actual breakdowns and predictions of these games uh, for this Sunday. Falcons and Bengals. The Falcons, I swear, every single year, they are the most difficult team to put tabs on. 
It's like they'll have these games where they just look really good offensively or, you know, younger guys come up big and, and they, they look like they can be a much better team. And then they just will give up big leads. They'll, you know, just be absolutely gashed by the opposing offense. And it's just like some weeks they find ways to win and they look really impressive. And on the other weeks, they're like, how is this team even three and three? So it's just, it's difficult. And then we look at the Bengals, which, you know, obviously a couple of difficult games going into the start of the season, but you definitely didn't expect them to be three and three at this point. And they have a couple games that made them look like they could be back to their old selves. They've had other games where the offense just wasn't clicking at all. And it's just really, these are two teams that are going to be really difficult to pinpoint going forward. And it should be a really good game between the two of them um, to see, you know, I think these are two teams that could, a lot of questions could be answered about them going into this matchup. Um, For this matchup, I think I'm going to have to go with the Bengals um, because it's just so difficult to trust the Falcons, even with the biggest of leads, um, against uh, an offense that is really starting to churn um, a lot quicker and it seems to be picking up speed, at least gaining their footing a lot more um, in these last couple weeks. Um, So I got to trust Joe Burrow and uh, Jamar Chase in this kind of a matchup and see if it works out for me. But, um, excuse me, I'm just trying to figure out these levels. Um, So I'm going to go with the Bengals there, hold myself to that, and we'll see what happens. Lions at Cowboys. This seems like a pretty easy one. I think this should be another game where the Lions, like, kind of give the other team a little bit of a scare. Um and it, it should be a closer game than people would think a lot like other games for the Lions this season. But you got to go with the Cowboys here. The Lions de- defense is just impossible to trust. You know, there there's no way you can win games at a consistent level when your defense is that awful. I mean, I haven't seen a worse defense in a long time. Um, if the Lions would just have been able to get a, a decent defense going, their offense would have carried them at least to a, I, I believe, possible two and three maybe even three and two record at this point they definitely would have beaten the Vikings um, if their defense would have held up Um, but the Cowboys are looking good Um, Dak Prescott should be back for this game Uh, a good game for him to ease into against a really a really bad defense Um, so you can't imagine the Cowboys drop this game this was kind of tempting to put as my upset of the week but the Lions defense again is just so bad man Uh, the Colts at the Titans Another game that's tempting for my upset of the week, but the Colts are a lot like the the Falcons. I talked the same way about them. Matt Ryan, difficult to trust. You know, he seems to be like a solid, you know, I can get you to a certain extent if you can carry me to that point. He's not going to give up a whole lot of mistakes. He's just going to be that solid guy that it can be a really good leader. Um, He's not going to break stats by any means at this point in his career, but I think Jonathan Taylor needs to pick it up um, and play better um, because he hasn't been doing horrible so far. But if you're going to be the the face of a team and you want that team to continue to succeed, you got to do better. And then you have the Titans. Looks like they're finding their mojo. Um, They started off the season really rough with a a loss against, at that point, looked like a very, you know, you, you look at a game against the Giants to start off the season, you think, oh, this should be a quick win. Of course, the Giants are now 5-1, and one, so it's hard to gauge that. Um, lose another tough one, um, get absolutely destroyed by the Bills. Um, but then they came back the last few games and have looked pretty good. For that reason, because they look like they're getting their mojo back, I'm going with the Titans because the Colts are once again a difficult team to trust, and um, I'm going to put this game in the hands of Derrick Henry. Um, Derrick Henry's been definitely playing better than uh, Taylor so far this year. Packers at Commanders, it's tough to pick this one as the upset of the week. Um, I think at some point something's got to give for this Packers team, and the Commanders have been looking like one of the worst teams in the league so far this year. Um, So I'm going to have to go with the Packers on this one, Um, even with it being in Washington or wherever. I don't even remember where the Commander Stadium is. It's a whole whole hassle. Um, But... I think the the Packers are still too good of a team to lose three in a row uh, against teams that they should beat. Although, once again, the Jets and Giants are not looking horrible. 
Uh, but I, I don't think that they lose three straight games um, to teams like this. Um, commanders are looking too bad. Uh, Carson Wentz, even with the Packers' defense struggling, they should be able to to do good things against Carson Wentz. So I'm going to go with the Packers there. Buccaneers at Panthers. Uh, a lot of games where there's a potential for upset of the week this week because there's a lot of uneven matchups this week. Um, but I will go with the Buccaneers here. Um, the Panthers are 1-5, and five, and they got instantly worse the last couple days. So imagine now this Panthers team already 1-5, and five, now without Christian McCaffrey, um, along with other players that I'll mention um, on Tuesday or Monday or whenever I make that video. Um, but there's just absolutely no way uh, that I see the Buccaneers losing this game, even with their their offensive struggles so far this year and losing to the Steelers, which is very embarrassing. Um, I, I don't know if the Panthers will win another game this year, honestly. Um, they seem to be really tanking, um, giving up some picks, even though the Panthers GM said they're not tanking. Okay, sure. Tell yourself that. It's not true. Here we go. Giants at the Jaguars. I'm going to do it, guys. Upset of the week. Jaguars are going to upset the New York Giants. The Giants coming off of one of the, the best wins they've had this season against the, the Ravens coming off big, and they're thinking, man, we're 5-1, and one, and now all we have to do is beat the Jaguars to become 6-1, and one, and that's the kind of trap that you can really let yourself fall in when you're, you've been exceeding expectations and all these news media outlets are hyping you up. This is the exact kind of situation I would expect the Giants to fall in. And the Jaguars are that team, they have been the last couple years, where if you let them in and you don't take them seriously, they will let you, make you pay for it. They're not the best team, but they definitely will feed off of that energy of, you know, they see you napping and they take advantage of it. Um, Trevor Lawrence has been definitely developing well this season, um, so I'm going to go with the upset of the week, and I will mark that U-O-T-W. Um, acronyms are difficult. Um, so we'll see how that one pans out. My first upset of the week pick is the Jaguars. Browns at Ravens. Browns, another team that has been difficult to gauge. There's been weeks where Chubb has been so good that it single-handedly feels like he can lead them uh, far in the season. Um, but that being said, I still have to go with the Ravens. This Ravens defense, rough. Um, but I don't think Brissett is the quarterback that's going to take advantage of it quite the same as other other quarterbacks have this year. I know Daniel Jones did, and, you know, he's not the best, but I don't know. This Ravens team is also a difficult team to gauge, um, but I think I trust Lamar Jackson more at this point. Mark Andrews has been a beast for the Ravens and for my fantasy team, um, so I got to go with them in this matchup, especially at home. Jets at Broncos. This is another one that could be an upset of the week potential. I just don't know, even with it being 4-2, and two, if the Jets should ever be a team that you'd think could be upset. Um, I know I just said that the Giants would lose, and it's just kind of the same story for them. Um, but I decided not to go with it. Um, Russell Wilson has only thrown five touchdowns this season. So they've played more weeks than he's thrown touchdowns, which is embarrassing. Um... I got to, it's tough. This could easily be a game that the Jets lose because, again, same thing as the Giants. The media is hyping them up a bunch, um, but still a lot of people to disprove um, because with as much hype as they're getting on one side, there's going to be all the people saying, oh, this, it's the same old Jets no matter how they play. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Jets here. Um, they, they're 3-0 and so far away. They seem to really thrive when they're playing away games. Um, and until the Broncos get their offense figured out, I'm just, I'm not going to pick them because it's just been rough. It's been really rough so far this season. And the Broncos defense has not been able to pull them out of the hole quite as well as you would hope. Um, Texans now at the Raiders and man, the Raiders have been a disappointment this year so far. Josh Jacobs has been a disappointment. Derek Carr has not led the team nearly as well. Um, Devontae Adams hasn't. I mean, Devontae Adams has played well, but his presence hasn't impacted the team as much as you'd think because of the the, the play of other guys around him. Um, but the Texans are even worse, um, so I'm going to go with the Raiders. It's a hard it's a hard one to even break down. 
Um, but I think the Texans have been the worst team in the league so far, minus that one really impressive win um, against the uh, against the Colts. But I'm going to have to go with the Raiders there. Seahawks at Chargers. This is another one where you could start thinking th- it's 3-3 three and three versus 4-2, and two, so it's not really upset of the week caliber. But I feel like every single week we're saying, okay, this is the week where the Seahawks fall off. This is the week where Geno returns to the way he played the last few years or when he was with the Jets, but it hasn't happened yet. And this Chargers defense has not been quite as good as you'd think. Um, they, they did play really well last week, but it was against the Broncos. That being said, I I don't know. Justin Herbert is going to continue to improve. Um, and I don't know. It, every week it's difficult to, to pick the Seahawks because you think it's going to be that week. Maybe it will be another week where Geno Smith goes crazy, but I'm going to pick the Chargers um, at at home um, in this one. I say air quotes for obvious reasons. Chiefs at 49ers, a 325 game. This should be the game of the week. Um, And this is tough. I have no idea if Christian McCaffrey is going to be available yet. I, I don't think he'll play quite yet, although this would be a really good game for him to play in because the 49ers are going to need all the help they can get against the Chiefs. But, I don't know, he's definitely not going to be 100% with the playbook and everything. If he does play, we'll have to see. Um, either way, I'm going to have to go with the Chiefs here. Um, the Chiefs have been cooking. They've been the best, at least, at least in the last two, three weeks, the Chiefs have been the best team um, in the AFC, or sorry, the Bills are better, but the Chiefs have been playing lights out football, nevertheless. It really is just the Bills and the Chiefs in a whole other level. Um, but they're definitely playing better than the 49ers right now, and even with the additions that the 49ers have made, um, I think I still have to go with the Chiefs here. Steelers and Dolphins for Sunday night football, what a snoozer. Um, Even with Tua most likely coming back, um, even if he doesn't come back, the Steelers did beat the Buccaneers last week, but I'm going to have to see a lot more out of Kenny Pickett before I trust this team and enough to pick them. Um, so I'm going to go with the Dolphins, regardless of who they have at QB. Um, although it could be closer than expected uh, if Tua doesn't play. Um, but as as boring as that game is, check out this one. Bears at Patriots for Monday Night Football. After making a sit through that snoozer of a Broncos-Chargers game, the most boring overtime game I've seen in a while, they make us sit down and watch the Bears. I don't know how the Bears got more primetime games than the, than the Vikings have so far this season, or at least they've tied up with the amount of um, post or primetime games this season. The Bears are the most boring team in the NFL to watch. I don't care what anyone says. Um, they're also one of the worst teams in the NFL in general, kind of go side, side to side. Um, but the Patriots should win this one. Um, even if they went wildcat every single every single play they might be able to beat the bears in this one um the the bears defense or offense is just absolute garbage um and it makes me embarrassed that we even let them get close with us the vikings um but patriots should win this one so everything is written down you have to take my word for all of this and i will break down how all of these games went and how many i got right on tuesday um so thank you so much for watching i'm also going to be doing a um, breakdown a little bit of the trade deadline up to this point. I'll do kind of a halfway point of the trade deadline on Monday. And then I'll wait after that until the very end of the trade deadline to break down anything else that happened. Unless, of course, the Vikings do something and they'll cover it right away. But all that's coming for you. I might give you some um, World Series predictions for the MLB. Um, now that that is kind of getting into the AL and NLCS, I kind of ran out of time to do those predictions. I apologize for that. But with me having more time, I'll also break down the World Series predictions and everything like that. So thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll see you on the flip side.